since many of you have been asking me, Rob, when are you going to do another nickel hunt other than your Monday live stream box battles for nickels? And I thought, you know what? It has been a while. So I picked up a box of nickels from a bank I don't normally pick up nickels from. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure, and that's right, we've got a one box nickel hunt today to do, and I'm pretty excited. I haven't opened it up yet, praying that for some reason it's not uncirculated nickels, unless of course it's 2020. That being said, let's pop the top on this bad boy and see what we got here. Well, it's definitely, definitely circulated nickels, so without a doubt, we're gonna be doing a nickel hunt. Let me just take a quick peek on these top ones. The box is in a little bit of a disarray. You can see some of the rolls have slid down to the side. That'll make hunting it not as easy to keep track of the roll numbers, but hopefully we got some goodies. Since we flipped it one way, let's go ahead and flip it the other way. Looks like we got a pretty old one right here, probably just a 64D. You guys know the drill. We're hunting for buffalo nickels, obviously any silver war nickels, I'll be looking for key dates or semi-key dates, any of the varieties in either the Buffalo series or the Jefferson series. And of course, we'd love to score another V-nickel, which I have only found two in all the nickel boxes that I have hunted. As a reminder, if you're interested in getting one of my nickel mats or my microscope or even nick -a date I have links to those also down below. All right, enough of that stuff. Let's get on to the fun stuff and start cracking some rolls. Our first find of the box is a 1952 minted in Philadelphia. Not a bad looking nickel for nearly 70 years old. Roll number six, second find of the box, just another 50s, 1959 Denver. Roll eight is gonna yield the oldest nickel of the box so far. Pretty beat up 1940 out of Philly, but it's a 40s. And we'll take it. Same roll. A 1957 out of Denver. Roll number nine. Look at this. You can tell by the back. Looks like a proof strike. And it is 2005. S proof. Not in the best shape, but a proof nickel found in the box early on. Same roll as the proof. And we've got a 1942 Philadelphia non-silver. The 42 through 45 are silver years, but they have to have the big letter above the Monticello building in order to be a silver. Otherwise, they're not. This is the transition year, and it was before they minted them out of 35% silver. Still, 1942 is a nice find. Wish it would have been the 42D because we could have checked for the over mint mark over the horizontal D. It's not. Still makes me happy. Let's look for more. Roll 10. Another find. And this one's just a 2009 Denver. It's pretty beat up. But I do pull out 2009s because they are a lower mint year. Matter of fact, in the dimes, the pennies, the nickels, the quarters, you name it, they're all lower minted in 2009. Not worth anything additional in this condition. Either way, 2009 on the board as well. Same roll as the 09. We have a 1955 here. Hopefully it's a Philadelphia. It's not, it's a Denver. In 1955, you are looking for the Philadelphia minted one. It is a semi-key date. We've got a 55D, but we can check a 55D for a D over S. See if we have an over mint mark. Just a little bit of damage. On the 55D over S, you will see part of the S up here. You'll see it come through here and through the bottom. There is some oddities on this, but I don't see what I want to see for D over S. Still, always fun taking a look. And another find for the board. Roll 13, another 2009 Denver. Roll 15, a 1941 out of Philly. Roll 18, another 40s nickel. 1947 out of Philadelphia. Roll 19, another 40s nickel. This one's 1941, also 
out of Philadelphia. So, so far, we're finding a lot of 40s and 50s nickels, including that proof find, but nothing really cool yet. Of course, we're not even halfway done with the box, and I'm happy that we're finding some stuff, but let's see if we got any goodies in this box, too. Same roll. I thought it said 55, but it's a chewed up 53, Philadelphia. Roll 26, and we're going to have another 40s nickel, and this one is a 1948 minted in Philadelphia. Roll 27, we have our second 1952 of the hunt, and this one's out of Philly as well. Roll 29, and we've got another 1955. Could this be the Philadelphia mint? It is not. But we get to check it for the D over S. And I don't see it either. Still fun to look like I said before. And we'll take looking for varieties anytime. Roll 31. We've got another 1940 nickel. Uh, I think that might be an S on this one. It is 1940S. Not a special date, but cool find nonetheless. Roll 32 and the reverse of the Ender I thought was going to be old. And it is older, I should say. 1958 Denver. And I think I see another old one right here. 1947 Denver as well. Roll 33 and we're finally going to get something in the 30s. 1939. So we want this to be a D or an S for a key date, and if not, we want to check it for any doubling on the reverse. So there's no mint mark there, which means it's not a key date, but is there any doubling on this one? No doubling. It would be heavily doubled on the words five cents and on the word Monticello. No doubling, no mint mark, just a standard Pretty worn 1939, but that is the oldest nickel of the box. Same roll, another 50s, 1953. I think that's Denver, but it could be an S. Can't really tell. It is an S. 53 S, a lot better than the other 53. Lots of fines, 130s. Can we get a Buffalo nickel or a war nickel before this box runs out? Roll 34, another 1940. San Francisco, 1940 San Francisco. So it's good to see some S mint marks in the box. Makes me happy. Now if we just get it on a 38 or a 39, I'd be real happy. Roll 35 is gonna have a beat up 1940. Just showing all the fine, so we'll show it. 1940 Denver. Roll 37, 1954 Philadelphia. Roll 41, a 1941, San Francisco. Roll 42, 1957, minted in Denver. Roll 43, and I'm about to show you a nickel that I don't find too often. We've got a 1950 peeking out from behind this 1973, I believe. Yes. Now we know for sure it's gonna be a semi-key at least, but could it be a 50D? Judging by its appearance, it has been abused over the years, and I'm gonna say it's probably just a 1950P. I don't see a mint mark with the naked eye, but I wanna check it just in case. Yeah, no mint mark. So unfortunately, it's a pretty beat up 1950. But because it is a semi-key, I'll be keeping it anyway. But I want to try a product on here to see if I can clean it up a little bit without cleaning it. I'll be right back. So I recently purchased this MS-70 stuff from a coin show. And I've tried it on a couple of quarters to see how it would clean. And it looks like it does a good job. Now, I don't know. They claim that it's safe to use on these types of coins. But I figured since we have a 1950 here in pretty beat up shape, we'll give it a test. I'm going to go ahead and set the camera up like this. I do have gloves on for this application. Got to be safe. This stuff is an industrial cleaner. We'll dip the Q-tip in there and we'll just dab it on for right now. Let it sit on there for just a second. We'll do this real time. We get a little bit more because I don't think I dipped it deep enough. All right. So now that we've done that, 
We're just going to roll the Q-tip across it. Don't really want to scratch the surface, even though it's just a Q-tip. We want to be safe. And you can see already the Q-tip is definitely getting some of the stuff on it, which means it's definitely coming off of the coin. I don't know how long this is going to take to make it look a lot nicer, but we'll give it a few seconds here and see how it goes. So now that we've done the one side, let's go ahead and try the other side of the Q-tip, see if we can get a little bit more removed. So it does look like it's getting better and I probably can continue to apply it but for sake of time, I won't spend too much more time on camera doing it. I'm going to let it sit with a little bit on it for a little bit. We'll take a look at it at the end of the box. Roll 45, and uh, look at this. Another 1939 in a little bit better shape. Will there be a mint mark? There is not. Is there some doubling? There is not. No mint mark, no doubling. Just another 39P, but I'll take it all day. We're on roll number 49, and I just started to slide them down, and sure enough, we've got a 55. Will this one be a Philadelphia mint? It is not, but we get to check for the D over S, since it is a Denver mint. A little bit of oddities around there, but not seeing what I want to see for a D over S. Still fun to look. Same roll a few coins later. 1949 out of Philly. Well, unfortunately, we didn't get a parting gift in roll 50. We finished the box. Still, 29 finds out of that box, and I like between 20 and 25 every nickel box. Yeah, we didn't get any key dates. We only got one semi-key, which I'll get to in a second. And we didn't get any buffaloes, no silver, and of course, no V-nickels. Still, I had a lot of fun. We got quite a few in the 50s, and almost every year besides 51 and 56. We got a lot of years in the 40s, no silver and no 46, but still pretty good finds. As far as the keeper coins for the box, 209s and an 05 S proof. We got two 1939 Philadelphias, and here's that 1950 Philadelphia as well. The main thing I was looking for on that cleaner was would it make it look better and did it disrupt any of the luster or look like it had any scratches from cleaning it? And I don't see any of that. This was a trash nickel to begin with. I think it only looks slightly better. Obviously, the jury's still out on the MS-70. I know it's designed for BU and proof type coins, not necessarily for ones that are heavily circulated and dinged up like this, but thought I'd give it a shot. I also kept a 1962 Looks really nice, minted in Philly. It's not a proof, but it is beautiful. And figured I'd pull this toner aside. It's only an 88, but kind of cool, Tony. I like to keep toners like this. At the end of the day, I'm not disappointed. We got a semi-key, couple of 39s, pretty good amount of finds. Yeah, I hunt these because I love finding myself some silver or some buffaloes or key dates or even really nice AU Plus type coins. We didn't get a lot of that today, but we got a lot of stuff to look at, and that was a lot of fun. Hopefully you had fun hunting this box with me. If you did, appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting, and thanks for watching.